I'd like to start with a poem that was published a long time ago. It was one of my first publications, and it was in Jackson Wheeler's uh, magazine or journal, if you want to call it, called Solo. I was so honored, and needless to say, we will miss him forever. First boy. Just imagine, the first beautiful boy I ever knew was a slender strawberry blonde, paleness peppered in brown freckles, skin and hair singed with salmon red. The blue in his eyes ran all the way to the back of his head, and how those eyes must have shown amazement as planes lifted up and over unfamiliar breadth of water, jagged outlines of Pyrenees, sluggish transport guzzling oil by the Red Sea, swooping past Himalayas, Bay of Bengal, nosing towards rice paddies, ancient Buddhist temples, those mispronounceable landscapes at the farthest end of the world. Poolside, on patches of lawn, we like to watch him lift barbells made in the factory downtown and imagine how we felt as the black iron hit his chest, then dipped back to the cement sometimes 50 times before someone's mother picked us up at five. Knowing that young girls could ruin him, he'd say bye bye sunburned neck inclined to one side, maybe to have a closer look. And just imagine the look he had as he was hit and spit, smoke high into the air. That first boy I ever knew to die in Vietnam. His fierce scorched skin opening beyond what anyone should ever have to feel. Just to lighten it up a little bit, and because we're all from LA, and uh, I think I'll read a, actually it's a revision of a poem in the book, and uh, to our youth, a lot of us spent a lot of time in clubs, a lot of them on Sunset Strip. It's called After Midnight, and the epigraph is After Midnight, we're gonna let it all hang down. J.J. Kale and Eric Clapton. In the days before drought, we had umbrellas in the trunk, men washing their cars regardless of moody skies, slippery bands of clouds scuttling along the horizon, daring us to scamper in heels and sleeveless to the clubs where women strutted hiked up skirts and flirty ways we'd flip our hair, show our teeth with pleas, and the boys would tail us into outlaw blues and smoky clubs along the strip where where stripping was not the main event, but music, music, music was a nightly draw, cruising like topless Corvettes to find who we would see that night, who was hot and who was going to plummet from the stage into waves of arms, the guy to play the longest solo, who knew a friend who opened for Janice, how the stairs would spiral down to the ladies' room loaded with boo and gossip and that mystery girl with a little something extra like Sandoz acid on a postage stamp. And we'd swoon for anyone thumping live and bare-chested, swooping gallon jugs of Jack from earthquaking floors, music midweek at the Central with cheap drinks, and debut bands wailing to be heard on the way up, 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 lady frontmen kicking sultry and loose, life like life, like life relied on four four beats of bass drums. We whirled and spun in arms of out-of-towners at the lingerie, open later than Gazzari's with neon buzzing and sizzling on the north side of sunset. And if we were lucky, a celebrity might take us up to on the rocks, drunk as truckers or thieves, girls rubbing up to guys in skin-tight jeans, silky shirts undone to the skin loose and limber, the guitars cutting into bones, shoes clicking, 
slamming into the dark in a wake of strangers as we swept the asphalt for cops and leaned into a daze of affection, lather of transient attention just before the dawn, ears ringing with promise to see each other later, baby, later, later, later. <laughs> Y'all remember. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> and I want to end with a poem uh, that I was really honored to have in Askew magazine. And because I couldn't make the reading of this uh, particular issue of Askew, I believe it was the last one, I wanted to read a poem called Great Escapes. <clears throat> The only thing you need to know is Jimi Hendrix is buried in Renton, Washington, right next to his grandmother. After the first martini, she is radiant, persevering man beside her, delighted by a flourish of her hand as he goes on with his story of a dog run down in Beverly Hills, and he does go on. Tidbits regarding the market, wizardry of masseurs, and soon the drone of him makes her love the ease of ordering another. Mine skipping lightly to the edge of a funny universe where she uncorks at the waist as he slips his hand between her hip and a bar stool she steps from like she's coming from a train. Sailing to the john, her black pump shoves the door open to green tile around the mirror, pink ones slope to a sink, and by morning he, he says he carried her. She was light as air, and he leaves her a peach, two aspirin, his out-of-town number. When she wakes, I make her a breakfast of tomato juice with vodka, study how pepper twirls, but never mixes in. A sadness settled in her like a tiny hotel where pain resides, where she wanders its halls and checks in on traveling lovers, on the dead, on her father screaming at us for something no one did. When I leave, she flashes her toes to the sun, clicks the chaise down, one, two, three, reminds me to bury her in our old hometown in Renton, reminds me to dance on her grave the way we did when they buried Jimi Hendrix under a plaque no larger than oversized Hershey bars, his grandmother dead at a hundred under identical plaque, sleeping with one eye open, just a stride away, a stride away, simple, vigilant stride away. Thank you.